Hey, folks, welcome back to Rugby Ascendant segment here on Chris White Africa and on the Rugby Ascendant channel. This is Chris in Central Pennsylvania. And my special guest for this session is Robbie Petzer from South Africa. Hey, Robbie, how are Chris, how are you? Yeah, I'm very well. Thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate that. Ah, a little bit surprised you there, huh? Yeah, you didn't call me. <laughs> so, folks, Robbie is uh, plays rugby with Rugby ATL there in Atlanta, but this guy has got a lot of rugby under his belt. So, let me ask you right off the bat, Robbie, when did you start playing rugby? At what age? Oh, since I can remember, I started playing rugby. Um, I started playing rugby in primary school. Uh, I was about uh, six, seven years old when I started playing. Now, there are 18,000 South Africans playing for Rugby Atlanta. So, uh, <laughs> so we, yeah, have to dis- we have to distinguish this a little bit. Most of these guys. Now, I just had Marco on and, and uh, he was born in Hauteng, but he didn't grow up there. Uh, there's an awful lot of guys on the squad, except for maybe Mumpson and yourself, who are really uh, Western Cape guys, Western province. They're hanging out, growing up down there. But but you're from the Free State, are you not? Yeah. Yeah. I grew up in the Free State. Uh played a little bit of my rugby in Cape Town because uh, after school, I went to Western Province in the Institute. So I was there on the 19th. So I know a little bit of the Cape Town lifestyle and how it is down there. But uh, mostly I grew up in the Free State, yeah. And I think you were born in, is it, is it Freydefort? Is that where you are born? Um, so that's where my parents live. They are from there. I was born in Paris. Oh, yeah. okay. okay. It's, uh, it's about 10 kilometers from there. So it's not far. So it's still inside the world's largest impact crater. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> For those who yeah. don't know, that's a massive crater that's uh, like uh, up to 300 kilometers across in some points there. And it, it covers a big portion of the free state. So 10 kilometers away is going to still be inside that impact crater. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So where my parents is from, that's where that meteor, that, that's where the impact was in Fairford, where they are from. Now, a lot of folks growing up uh, in the free state, of course, are engaged in agriculture. Is your family uh, also in agriculture? Were you a farmer? Oh, so no, actually not. My dad is a police officer. Oh, okay. Yeah, so my dad's been in the police service there for about 23, 24 years now. No, I mean, no, longer, probably like 26, 27 years. He's been in the police service. Well, he's got his hands full in South Africa. <laughs> yeah, no, he does. <laughs> <laughs> we, we won't get into that topic today. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> now, now, did you um, also um, live in Kronstadt at some point? Yeah, so when I went to high school, I was uh, in Paris for one year. I went to Kronstadt. I was there for a couple of years. And then my last year, I went to uh, Kimberley, where uh, Momsen played his curry cup. Yeah, indeed he did. Yeah. <laughs> As I was talking to Marco and I share with Johan, I said, it's, uh, what's it like to play in concrete? Uh- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, our high school field was definitely concrete down there. It's hot. It's hot down there. It is very hard. I, I saw the uh, the cheetahs against the Greek was recently. They surprised the cheetahs. And um, once again, I always think that um, it's probably easier for the Greek was to win at home because they've got that huge, you know, um, when guys hit the ground, if they've never hit it before, like, oh, oh, man, what am I doing here? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, you've so you said that you played with uh, Western Province. That uh, was the under 20s, correct? Under 19s. Yeah. Oh, under 19s. Under 19s. Okay. Yeah. Under 19. After that, yeah, I moved back home. Um, I went to Bloemfontein. I studied a little bit. I was with um, with the Shimla's Young Guns. I played for the Varsity Under 20 team, and that same year I played um, Curry Cup for the Griffins. On uh, the 20s, we won that competition, and from there on, I started playing senior rugby. Well, these these days uh, with Curry Cup, well, now of course there's no spectators in the stands at all in South Africa at the moment, even if it's mm-hmm. British and Irish lines. But but over the past several years, the crowds showing up at the Curry Cup has been a little disappointing from my perspective. Uh, pretty small crowds. Uh, Major League Rugby, you probably have some larger crowds these days at Major League Rugby games than you experience in some of your Curry Cup matches. Oh yeah, definitely. And I mean, that's a fun thing playing in the MLR as well because it's it's something new and. Everyone that's come out to one game will definitely come out to the next one. So that's also what helps a lot with MLR, that it's it's still growing. And I think in the future, we'll have a lot, a lot of fans in the stands. Now, you, you originally came to MLR, not with Atlanta, because they weren't even a league then, but you came over and you were with, uh, well, they were originally the Glendale Raptors, then became the Colorado Raptors, and then they've decided yeah. to to take some, take a different direction. So it, that's where you first signed with. What was it like playing in Colorado? I understand that they had a, a good um, a good culture there for rugby. 
Colorado was good, especially having guys like Mark Bullock down there, who's um, he's been in rugby roots in America for some time now, and um, he started the high school teams back then there in, in Glendale and stuff. And the mayor, who was one of one of our big owners, I mean, he's he loves rugby and he lives for it. So it was a good culture and. The setup we had there with the stadium there and the gym and the practice field just there. So it was a good setup. Definitely was a good setup. I enjoyed Colorado a lot. Glendale was so good to us and it was just a real fun place to be. But um, nonetheless, I love Atlanta. It's so good being down here. And obviously, we didn't get the the results back in, in, in Colorado where we wanted to be at where I feel like here yeah, we have a good co- culture, rugby culture, and everyone's on the same page and we're going to win this championship. Ooh, there you go. There's, there's, there, there's, that's not a prediction, but there's some confidence <laughs> there. There's some confidence. I haven't put anybody in the spot, Robbie. Well done. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I, I was just talking to Marco a few moments ago and I, I didn't want to put him on the spot anyone else because I know coach Lawrence is always like this game in front of us, this game in front yeah, of us. Yeah, no, that's exactly. Now, <laughs> obviously, obviously we, we don't plan. We don't plan too far ahead of ourselves because we take game for game. We want to win this one first, but obviously the we have we have good confidence in ourselves, in our team, in our capability to win this competition. Definitely. Well, having seen your team early in the season, having gone to a game up here in DC, and then having been in Atlanta to see a game, and also following all your games, uh, watching them on television now. I would have to say that the team certainly, even with the adjustments with the Canadians and the American Eagles disappearing now for their their summer test, uh, the team has progressed as the year has gone on. You've got you gel better. Uh, guys are playing better. The team, uh, honestly, uh, seemed to be very prone to mistakes early in the season. Lots of errors, lots of unforced errors, mm-hmm. lots of penalties, some challenges with lineouts. That all seems to be improving and gelling at just the right time. You beat L.A., who got beat by NOLA this weekend. Ooh, that was a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it was a show. Well, and, and the Free Jacks did you a big favor because they took out uh, Rooney. So now Rooney's yeah, desperate to hold on to that slot. So you're you're in the catbird seat, but you can't you can't relax. But all in all, looking at the progression of the team and looking at the, what's happened around the league, you look to be in pretty good shape to continue gelling and move on and maybe win this championship. Yeah, no, I mean, if I have to be honest with you, we work really hard. We put in a lot of effort. If it's if it's in video analysts, if it's in the gym or on the field, we work really hard. And I think that's why we have so much confidence because we know when we step out onto the pitch, we've done the hard work. So I think that helps a lot. Well, I, the other thing I, I haven't mentioned this, I think I talked to Adrian Carlson about this uh, in a previous conversation, is that uh, one thing that really is interesting about rugby ATL is that not only are there a lot of South Africans on the team, but it's an international squad. You've got Canadians, you've got Argentines, you've got people from, from New Zealand on there. It's quite an international mix, plus the Americans in there. And it's really gelled kind of like, a, I don't want to say UN of rugby, but certainly certainly a very interesting mix of international players. Yeah, it's good. I mean, obviously, we have a real strong South African flavor in the team, and it helps a lot for us, for us guys. I mean, coming over and you have some people talking in your mother language, it helps a lot. But it's always fun, like being in the MLR quite some time now, and every team where you play at, you'll have guys from other countries, other cultures, and it's always fun getting those guys in, learning from each other, adapting to each other's cultures and stuff like that. And it's, it's always good and always fun to learn from each other. Well, has there been any, you've been at this for a while now, but going back to when you first came over to the U.S., has there been any kind of culture shock or anything that stood out for me that was a little different? Mark, Marco um, pointed out that um, you all drive on the incorrect side of the road and he had to learn how to drive on the proper side of the road here. So is there, is there, has there been any <laughs> culture shock for you like that? No, I mean, obviously, that 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 obviously in the beginning was a bit of a shock because we, like you say, we drive on the other side of the road. <laughs> I just wanted the other side, not the wrong side. Okay. <laughs> well, no, but to, but to be fair, we drive on the right, on the right yeah. side of the road. <laughs> yeah, okay, we just did. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just that, and then obviously daylight savings time. We don't have daylight savings, so for some of the guys, we still want to know where that where does that one hour go? So uh, <laughs> no, <way>. nowhere, <laughs> no, nowhere. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, it's all good. It's, it's been fun. It's, it's, it's been real fun. Well, that's excellent. I'm glad you made over here. Now this season, uh, you were injured early this season, weren't you? Oh yeah. I got a little bit of a niggle against uh, Utah in the beginning of the season. Uh, it took me out for the first, first two games, but um, yeah, progressing with the season with the boys, I think everything got a bit better to where we are now. 
Well, I was going to say, since you mentioned that back there at Fly Half, I noticed between uh, Rory and also Adrian and yourself, the kicking game is really looking good. You guys are really uh, gaining territory, doing a pretty good job. And also the box kicks are looking good. Uh, everything looks uh, really, really come along. Are you comfortable with that at this stage of the season? Yeah, I have to. I have to give a lot of credit there to Stephen Brett. I mean, he's been working with us every week, almost every day. The kickers will kick and we will do our prep and do what we have to do so we can win the kicking battle on Saturday or Sunday. But um, no, it's good. I mean, obviously, in the beginning of the season, we were struggling, struggling a bit with our territory game and that came down to execution of the kicks. But um, I feel where we are now, we almost have a whole back line and everyone can kick at this point. So it's good. No, absolutely. I'd have to say that it's definitely it's uh, I mean, all aspects of the game for rugby ATL really seem to have improved as the season's gone along. But I think that that's definitely a strong aspect of it. Watching guys against Rooney, it was a loss up there against Rooney that last game. But the kicking game looked pretty good there. Just a couple uh, lapses on defense um, yeah. that kind of hurt the team. But that looked pretty good. So um, you're feeling pretty good about the rest of the season. That's good news. Uh, yeah. long-term prospects. Uh, will you be playing back in South Africa at some point or playing both sides of the Atlantic? Uh, any idea? Yeah. So this, this season I will only play for Atlanta because when I get back home in a month or, or so after the final, um, <laughs> it, uh, <laughs> the, I, I won't be in time to play Curry Cup back home because they're already in the late stages of their season. So I'll be at home getting fit, getting stronger, better for next season. But, um, when I come back next season and the MLR is back to normal, we'll start in Jan and end in June. I'll probably go back home and play some Curry Cup a bit. Well, that's a good point. I think a lot of people miss because of the pandemic and the later start to this season, instead of starting yeah. the de dead of winter with Major League Rugby, it's had an impact not just on the summer test series for the Eagles and for Canada, but it's also had an impact on guys being able to go back and play in the Mitre Cup in New Zealand or being able to yeah. play and play in Curry Cup in South Africa. So interesting. Uh, good aspect. I think a lot of people miss that part, but uh, it seems like you're enjoying your time here in the U S your hair doesn't seem to be suffering. It looks like it's growing pretty well there in the humidity of Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, listen, uh, th th that's why I talked about Mark about th that as well, because the environment there. So Atlanta's a bit different. Secondly, than the free state, that's not a very humid place. Although you spend a lot no, of time. Not at all. So the humidity is something I'm struggling with because uh, <laughs> I don't like, I don't like hot weather, sweaty weather, but we're adapting good to it by this point now. Because um, also, if, if next year if we're coming back in January, we miss a bit of the summer, and uh, it's it's not the same. It's a it's a real humid heat where we have a bit of a more dry heat back home. Indeed, it's a bit of a brutal thing. Um, I, I yeah. don't really like to venture below the Mason Dixon line up here in the middle of the, the Atlantic here in the summertime. It's just too brutal for me. But Robbie yeah, Petzer, no. um, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you coming on here. We really appreciate it. And uh, best of luck uh, getting to the championship game and bringing that. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, Chris. Uh, you're welcome. So I just say uh, bye bye, Donkey, for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. This was awesome, Chris. Thank you.